This training will help ensure that food will be prepared and served safely. For further details and specific procedures, you may refer to the HACCP protocol book. We will review food defense plan, health and hygiene, temperature control, food handling, sanitizing, dishwashing, and a vomit and diarrhea plan. Food Defense Plan Food safety is paramount to the Food and Nutrition Services Program. Protocols are established in a HACCP plan. These instructions must be followed to ensure that steps are in place to protect customers and employees from illness. HACCP stands for Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points and is a process control system designed to identify and prevent microbial and other hazards in food production. It includes steps designed to prevent problems before they occur and to correct deviations as soon as they are detected. What can happen? Biological contamination. Germs like bacteria, viruses, and parasites can make us sick. When people talk about the stomach flu or the 24-hour flu, this is often foodborne illness. Common symptoms are vomiting, diarrhea, stomach cramps, and fever. Symptoms can start a couple of hours to several e weeks after eating. Chemical contamination. Chemicals can make you sick if they get into food. Store chemicals like soaps, cleaners, and sanitizers safely. Keep chemicals below food and work surfaces. A chemical should not be able to drip into food or onto work surfaces. Physical hazards are objects and food that can cause injury if eaten. Examples include broken glass, jewelry, bandages, pieces of metal, and fingernails. The statistics on foodborne illness prove how important it is to follow the food safety plan. Person in charge. Every food establishment must have a person in charge, also referred to as the PIC. The person in charge is there when you are operating, has knowledge and training to make sure food is safe, practices active managerial control, and answers employee questions. Active managerial control means taking action to verify and ensure that employees follow food safety practices and make sure no one works with food when they are sick. Leads are the designated PIC. Substitute leads also fill in as the PIC. Remember, you are the person in charge if you're the only person in the food establishment. Health and hygiene. Personal health. Food workers can spread germs to food even if they look and feel healthy. We must keep germs from getting to food with good personal hygiene. Always remember to only report to work if we are in good health. Do not go to work and remember to report symptoms if you have diarrhea, vomiting or jaundice, salmonella, shigella, E. coli, hepatitis A or norovirus, a sore throat with a fever, and work with a highly susceptible population. Do not work until vomiting and diarrhea are gone for at least 24 hours. Do not work with food or anything that touches food if you have an infected wound that you cannot cover, persistent sneezing, coughing, or a runny nose, a sore throat with a fever, been near someone with foodborne illness, and you work with a highly susceptible population. Dress and grooming. Always report to work dressed in clean attire. An apron must be worn when working in a food preparation area. Change your apron when it becomes soiled. Keep fingernails trimmed and neat so they are easy to clean. Avoid wearing artificial fingernails and fingernail polish. Wear single-use gloves if artificial fingernails or fingernail polish are worn. Do not wear jewelry that does not comply with the Shoreline Food and Nutrition Services employee dress code. Jewelry can hide germs that cause foodborne illness and make it hard to wash hands. Jewelry can also fall into food. While preparing food, food workers must remove watches, rings, bracelets, and all other jewelry on their arms or hands. 
jewelry that is hanging from neck, ears, or face must be removed while preparing and serving food. The exception is that wedding bands may be worn if they are covered with a glove when the food worker is preparing food. Treat and bandage wounds and sores immediately. Use finger cots or impermeable covers. When hands are bandaged, semi-use gloves must be worn. Wear suitable and effective hair restraints while in the kitchen. Hand washing. Improper hand washing is known to be the number one cause of foodborne illness in Washington State. You must wash your hands immediately upon entering a kitchen. You must also hand wash before starting to work, during work and as necessary to prevent contamination of foods, after handling unclean items, after handling raw meat, poultry, or aquatic foods. After using the restroom, you must wash twice, once in the restroom and again when returning to the kitchen, after eating or smoking. How to wash your hands. Only wash your hands in a hand wash sink. Do not wash your hands in a food preparation sink or a three compartment sink. Hand wash sinks must have hot and cold running water, soap and paper towels or an air dryer. The temperature of the water should be above 100 degrees, close to 110 degrees. Do not block a hand wash sink or store anything inside of it. From start to finish, hand washing should take at least 20 seconds. Wet your hands with warm water. Apply plenty of soap. Scrub your hands for 10 to 15 seconds, scrubbing under your fingernails, between your fingers and your wrist. Rinse your hands with running water. Dry your hands with a paper towel or air dryer. Churn off the water with a paper towel. Do not contaminate your clean hands with the faucet. Food preparation and serving. We are not allowed to touch ready to eat foods with our bare hands. We use disposable gloves, tongs, scoops, deli tissue, or other utensils to handle ready to eat food. Ready to eat food are foods that can be eaten without washing or cooking. Examples are washed fruit and vegetables that will not get cooked, bakery or bread items, cooked food, or food that will not get cooked. Take care to not contaminate areas by eating in food preparation areas. Eat, drink, or chew gum only in designated break areas where food or food contact surfaces may not become contaminated. To taste food while preparing, place a small amount of food into a separate container Step away from the exposed food and food contact surfaces. Use a teaspoon to taste the food. Never reuse a spoon that has already been used for tasting. Gloves and barriers. Dirty hands and surfaces can put germs on the outside of gloves. Gloves are used to protect food from germs, not to protect your hands from the food. If you touch anything such as a door handle or other unsanitized surface, you must wash your hands and change your gloves before returning to your project. Remember these rules for using gloves. Wash your hands before putting on gloves. Only use disposable gloves. Never wash or reuse gloves. Throw gloves away after they are used. Change gloves to get ripped or may be contaminated. Remove gloves and wash your hands after working with raw food. Patty paper is another common barrier. Always remember to choose a new piece of patty paper for each item that we serve. Temperature control, TCS foods. TCS stands for time and temperature control for safety. Bacteria in TCS foods can grow quickly when the conditions are right. These foods that will be focused on during a food safety inspection. Examples are meat, poultry, fish, seafood and eggs, dairy products, tofu, 
cooked beans, potatoes, rice, pasta and noodles, cooked fruits and vegetables, cut melons, cut leafy greens, cut tomatoes, sprouts such as alfalfa or bean sprouts, fresh garlic or herbs and oil, and whipped butter. If you have a question about whether or not a food is a TCS food, please ask your supervisor. It is important that all these foods are handled correctly. TCS Procedure Temperature control is our primary process to keep foods safe. Bacteria grows best between 41 and 135 degrees. This is called the danger zone. Hot foods are held at 135 degrees or hotter. Cold foods are held at 41 degrees or colder. Time as a public health control measure refers to using time instead of temperature to limit bacterial growth or toxin formation. In order to use time as a control, food must be ready to be immediately served or removed from the temperature control. Products must be marked and identified and the label must include the time that the product has to be discarded, which is within four hours. Once time of the control is used, it cannot go back into temperature control. Receiving and delivering. It is important to be aware of the quality of all food that we receive into our kitchens. Do not assume that the food we receive is held to our standards without checking first. When receiving items from vendors or outside companies, reject refrigerated foods that are held above 41 degrees. Milk and shell eggs may be up to 45 degrees. Reject frozen foods that are above zero or show signs of thawing and refreezing. When Central Kitchen delivers food to the school kitchens, the Central Kitchen will verify temperatures before delivering. Upon receipt at school kitchens, cold food deliveries must be checked. Record the temperature on the production record. If the temperature is over 41 degrees, immediately report this to the central kitchen. Once the food is delivered, the kitchen lead must transfer the food into the refrigerator, either the entire cart or individual items onto the refrigerator shelves. When receiving hot food deliveries, Check the temperature of the foods. If the food is below 135 degrees, call the central kitchen manager to report the issue. The food must then be reheated to 165 degrees for at least 15 seconds and then held at or above 135 degrees. Document these actions under the action and comment section on the time and temperature log. Always remember to place food immediately into the oven or warmer or the refrigerator for cold holding. Cooking. It is important that proper temperatures are used when cooking food. Different foods have different temperatures that they need to be cooked to, known as the final cook temperature. Vegetables, fruits, herbs, and grains that will be held hot Packaged and ready to eat foods such as hot dogs or canned chili need to be cooked to 135 degrees. Eggs, seafood, whole beef or whole pork needs to be cooked to 145 degrees. Ground meats such as hamburgers and sausage need to be cooked to 158 degrees. Poultry such as chicken, turkey or duck stuffed foods or stuffing, casseroles, raw meat, seafood, or eggs that are cooked in a microwave, or any item that is reheated needs to be cooked to 165 degrees. Cold holding. Here are some tips to help keep food at 41 degrees or colder. Keep refrigerator doors shut as much as possible. In a prep cooler, use deeper pans and use lids to help trap the cold air. Do not overfill pans. Remember to check the temperature often with a food thermometer. When thawing food, 
Never thaw food on the counter at room temperature. Plan ahead to thaw the food overnight or for several days in the refrigerator. You may also cook food from a frozen state. Cooling. Cool food to 41 degrees within 6 hours. Food must cool to 70 degrees within 2 hours. When cooling, food cannot be more than 2 inches deep. Leave the food uncovered so the heat can escape quickly. Refrigerate the food right away. Cool the food on the top shelf so that nothing can fall into the uncovered food. Do not stack or cover cooling food. Pot holding. Here are some tips to keep hot food at 135 degrees or hotter. Make sure steam tables and food warmers are hot before adding hot food. Cover the food with a lid or with a disposable food bag. Do not add cold food to already prepared hot food. Remember to check food temperature often with a food thermometer. Reheating for hot holding. You can reheat food and serve it if it was cooled safely. Reheat the food rapidly to 165 degrees within two hours. Do not use a steam table, slow cooker, or food warmer to reheat food. This will take too long and allow bacteria to grow. Stir the food often while reheating. Check the temperature in several places to make sure that the food is completely reheated to 165 degrees before placing it in a food warmer. Thermometer use. We have discussed several occasions that you will need to use a thermometer to test the temperature of the food that you wish to serve. When using a thermometer, lift the food with a utensil and remove it from the cooking surface. Do not measure food when it's on a cooking surface or in the oven. This will give an inaccurate temperature reading. Poke the thermometer into the thickest part of the food. Wait until the temperature on the thermometer stops fluctuating. Always clean and sanitize the thermometer before and after use. After cleaning the probe of the thermometer, wipe with a sanitized cloth or use an alcohol wipe. Thermometer calibration. Thermometers should be checked often for accuracy. At a minimum of once per month, the central kitchen will distribute crushed ice to all schools. Put the ice in a cup and fill with cold water to the top of the ice. Put the probe of the thermometer into the ice water. The temperature should read around 32 degrees. Documentation. Certain temperatures need to be recorded daily. We do not rely on our memory or what we think the temperature was. Record the delivery temperature, the receiving temperature, all refrigeration such as your walk-in, freezer, or reach-in coolers, final cooking temperatures, the temperature before we begin serving it, and temperatures when it is left over. Food handling preparation. It is important that throughout the process of handling food, we follow safe food handling practices. Sinks, surfaces, tools, and utensils must be clean and sanitized before use. A sanitizer bucket with sanitizer water and a clean rag should be at each workstation. All unprepped fruits and vegetables should be washed before cutting or serving. Wash the item in a clean sink in a colander. Do not overcrowd the container to wash properly. Cans and lids should be clean and sanitized before opening. Also ensure that the can opener is clean. Piercing a can can inject bacteria if surfaces are not clean. Only work with amounts of TCS foods that can be prepared in 30 minutes or less. Return items to hot or cold holding as quickly as possible. Storage locations. All food should be stored at least six inches off the floor in designated storage areas. 
This includes walk-in refrigeration and dry storage. Food should not be stored in areas that are not designated for food storage. Follow the FIFO procedure. FIFO stands for first in and first out. Use older items first as they come in and keep note of expiration dates. There may be times when an item comes in with an earlier expiration date than what you have on hand. Label cold food items with the date marking procedures that you have been trained on. Prevent cross-contamination. Cover or wrap washed or prepared food. TCS food must be 41 degrees for cold holding. Do not cover TCS food that is not yet cooled to 41 degrees. Store ready-to-eat food above other items. Follow the food storage diagram for raw meats. The top shelf contains ready-to-eat food. Below that, raw fish and eggs. Then raw ground or tenderized beef or pork, and at the bottom, raw poultry. Personal items. Do not store personal items with food or food contact surfaces. Dedicate a separate area for personal items. Chemicals and cleaning supplies. Do not store chemicals, detergents, or cleaning supplies with food. Chemicals should be stored below and away from food or food contact surfaces. Labeling. Each kitchen should have posted near the walk-in the labeling and date marking procedures. Date mark cold food that is to be kept for more than 24 hours. You must serve or discard food within seven days after you open or prepare it. The opening or preparation day counts as the first day. If food is frozen, the seven-day life shelf pauses. However, the total refrigerated time must still remain at seven days. The process is to label the food item with the product name, the date it was opened or prepared, the discard date, and the frozen date and thawed date if this process was used. Serving. We must ensure that whether food is served by us or is self-served, that all procedures meet our guidelines. Items in self-serve areas such as salad bars or open counters must be covered with a sneeze guard or individually wrapped and covered. TCS food should not be out for more than two hours particularly at elementary schools without refrigerated salad bars. Elementary schools cannot reuse TCS foods once they are stored in a salad bar. Secondary schools with refrigerated salad bars should verify temperatures before saving food at the end of service. TCS food that is above 41 degrees must be discarded. Contaminated food such as by tong handles or other objects touching the food, must be discarded. Unopened, non-TCS foods such as juice boxes may be reserved once they are sanitized. For items that we serve, they should be out of reach of the students. Hot or cold holding temperatures should be verified before saving to reuse any of these items. Separate serving utensils. Each item should have a separate utensil for both serving and self-serve items. If patty paper is used, a separate patty paper should be used each time. Sanitizing. Cleaning and sanitizing are not the same. Cleaning uses soap and water to get rid of food, dirt, and grease. Sanitizing uses chemicals or heat to kill germs. All food contact services should be sanitized before use. When you go to your workstation, remember to have your bucket and towel to wipe all surfaces that you may come in contact with. Procedures. Dispense the Q10 sanitizer solution from the designated dispenser. Test the solution to ensure it is at the right strength. 
wiping cloths must be kept submerged in the sanitizer and not left wet sitting on a table or a counter. All workstations should have a separate sanitizer bucket. Testing the sanitizer strength. Dispense the sanitizer into a bucket and wait for foam to dissipate. Tear off a small section of the test strip. Place the test strip and sanitizer for 10 seconds and then compare to the parts per million chart. The sanitizer should read between 200 and 300 parts per million or a medium green color. Store the test strips in a dry place until you are ready to use them. Dishwashing. We must take care to ensure that the pans, containers, and utensils we use are properly sanitized before and after we use them. We have commercial dishwashers in our kitchens. Commercial dishwashers use heat to sanitize. The final bridge temperature must reach 180 degrees. Daily, you should check the temperature to ensure that the hot water boosters are working properly so things sanitize properly. A three compartment sink is used for items that are too big for the dishwasher or if the dishwasher is not working properly. The first sink is to wash with hot soapy water. The second sink is to rinse with hot clean water. The third sink is to soak the items in sanitizer. Sanitize dishes. Your hands must be washed and sanitized before removing the dishes from the dishwasher rack. Do not contaminate dishes with dirty hands. All wet sanitized dishes must air dry. Do not use towels to dry the items. This could spread bacteria from unsanitized towels. Vomit and diarrhea cleanup. The health department policy requires a written vomit and diarrhea cleanup plan for all food service establishments. The full plan is contained in the HACCP binder under the Bloodborne Pathogen Exposure Control Plan. The procedures are, only custodians or managers will be involved with the waste removal and disinfection. They will wear PPE, personal protective equipment such as gloves, masks, and eye protection. Custodians have a cleanup kit for this purpose. All food service will stop if the incident occurs in a food preparation or food service area. The area will be blocked off within 25 feet of the incident. All food and single service use or disposable items will be discarded in the contaminated area. The waste will be removed and the air will be washed and cleaned. Cleanup tools, rags, or other items will be removed or discarded. The area will be disinfected. This is not the same sanitizer solution that you use in your kitchens on a daily basis. Once the area is disinfected, food service will wash, rinse, and sanitize reusable utensils, containers, or other equipment. Here are a few reminders and pointers from this training. You are the key ingredient in our food defense plan. Take action to ensure that our food is safe. Do not wait for someone else or ignore a problem. Keep yourself healthy and hygienic. Do not work if you are sick. Keep your hands and clothes clean. And remember to wear an apron when working with food. Hand washing. Wash your hands often. Do not take risks because we are in a hurry. Temperature. Keep hot food hot and cold food cold. Use a thermometer and document temperatures. Food handling. Keep your work area clean and sanitized. Don't allow for cross-contamination when preparing or storing food. Use the date labeling system. Do not touch food with our bare hands. Sanitizing and cleaning. Have sanitizer water and a towel before starting. Check the strength of the solution. Check the temperature of the dishwasher. Be aware of our cleanup plan for hazardous situations.
there are many more opportunities to learn about food safety. Keep learning and keep serving safe food.